to put this in perspective, we have joining us live Indian economist uh, Swami Nathan Iyer. Uh, good evening, Ms. good morning, Mr. Iyer. Thank you for speaking to us here on Times Now. Now, you were once a critic of the Sardar Sarovar project in 1989. What prompted you to change your mind? First up, that's what our viewers want to know. What prompted me to change my mind was the actual outcome. In 1989, I listened to uh, the protests by the Narmada Bachao Andolan and various other NGOs against the Sardar Sarovar Dam, which was the biggest of the many Narmada taps. They had begun. Uh, they had gone to a tribunal and insisted. They said so many past irrigation projects, big dams, have been disasters. Uh, there's been water logging, salinity. The resettlement has been terrible. People have suffered very, very bad. And for resettlement here, don't just give cash compensation. That will be frittered away. You must have land from the land. The tribunal, fortunately, awarded them five acres of land each. And one thought, well, let's go ahead with this. But the Narmada Bachao Andolan, led by Medha Patka, was against even this, saying all bad dams are bad, and this will also be a disaster. Uh, they said that the tribal way of life is completely different and unique. They are incapable of coping with ordinary mainstream life. So if the dam comes up and the tribals, uh, 33,000 uh, families are resettled in mainstream villages, they will not be able to cope. They will lose all their land to various loan sharks. They will end up as paupers in urban slums and their wives will have to become prostitutes. Terrible prospect. Also, while the project was supposed to get water all the way to arid areas like Rajasthan, Kutch, and Saurashtra. Medha Patkar argued that if you see the history of many projects, the water is hogged by large farmers near the canal head and some industries, and the tail enders far off, they get hardly any water at all. So claims of reaching all these arid areas are vast exaggerations. It will fail on that account. Now, the argument put forward by Medha Patkar was quite persuasive. And she was absolutely right that similar disasters had happened in various other irrigation projects. On top of which, the government was borrowing at extraordinarily high rates of interest because the World Bank funding had been rejected by it. So the, it had the prospect of being a financial disaster. For all these reasons, I wrote against the project, especially on the financial side, saying that, you know, all these poor tribals are just being uprooted and thrown out for what? for giving rich Patel farmers uh, water, which will be practically free. Uh, nobody dares to charge farmers uh, any significant sum of money. So this, I said, was not a good idea. Why did I change my mind? I changed my mind because I actually saw what had happened. What had actually happened, the water, in fact, was knocked out by the Patels. The water reached Rajasthan, it reached Kutch, it has reached Saurashtra. So millions of people have gained water for irrigation, water for drinking. Many of those people who have benefited were just as poor as the tribals were. Secondly, I have seen the resettlement of the tribals. Neeraj Kaushal and I did a research project comparing the plight of the resettled tribals with their former neighbors still in the forest. And we found that on almost all material parameters, the resettled people are far better off. Uh, they are far better off in ownership of land, ownership of durables, tractors, televisions, motorcycles, cars, all of those. They have much better access to schools, health, education, government offices, drinking water. So on all these accounts, the resettled tribals have been better off. And to that extent, you can say the rehabilitation has been a success. Now, you know, you must give some credit for this also to Medha Patkar, Arch Vahini and the others who agitated. Had they not been such strong agitators, the resettlement in uh, Sardar Sarovar may have been as bad as in some of the earlier projects. Ultimately, as we saw in our research, the outcome has been surprisingly good. It's a heartening thing. Therefore, I've said I have to revise my opinion. I had various fears. Those fears have turned out to be unwarranted. So I apologize that I was wrong. But I would suggest that Medha Patkar and Narmada Bachao Andolan should also apologize. So your fears have turned out to be unwarranted, but you're also saying that Medha Patkar's arguments were persuasive. Then what really prompted you to change your mind and ask her those questions? We'll be back in just a bit. Stay on with us, sir. Need to slip it over a short break.